Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we got some really interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with Rafael Brandau and I mentioned him already yesterday in my video but it wasn't a physique update quite like this one, it wasn't that revealing. Here we can actually see what exactly is going on with Rafael right now at around 10 days, only 10 days out of Arnold Classic and yeah, he is bringing it, he is definitely bringing the conditioning and more importantly, better size, he is definitely bigger, he is improved. Now this physique update was posted by Raphael's coach, Neil Hill, and in the caption he says, let's put some carbs back in and relight this fire. So yeah, I guess that means that Raphael is flat right here, that he's depleted, that he is pushing for conditioning, which is totally understandable, I would assume that he is at this point, because he was kind of, I would say, behind in the past couple of weeks, I mean, he definitely wasn't as shredded as, for example, James Hollins here, at like six weeks out, or Hari Chopin, or some of the other guys, so in that sense, he was behind, he was behind the other guys, but for him, I believe this is the right tactic, because he has more shows to do after this one, and personally, in my experience, there are two body types, one type gets better longer they stay in condition, and the other type gets worse longer they are shredded, so I guess Raphael knows that he crumbles down if he stays in condition for very long, so they were probably waiting for that final moment, and at this point, 10 days out, his conditioning is coming in, that's basically pretty much it, right? I mean, we can't see everything, we don't know what his glutes are looking like, what his lower back is looking like, hamstrings, but like, you can see it in the chest and the shoulders, the hardness is there, the separation is there, he does look dry and hard, and that's very good, especially if he is depleted right now, if they put a little bit of carbs back in, he's probably just gonna get even harder, but it's interesting when I say depleted, low carbs, what does that really mean? For Rafael Brenda. Well, let me show you. Actually, recently he went on a Menace podcast and he was asked what his carbs were during this prep, and the answer was rather surprising. Let me show you. To be honest, my diet was really, really easy because my lowest carbs day was 300 grams of carbs. And then I have my medium carbs day, which is 600 grams of carbs. Medium. And then I have. And then I have a super high carbs day, which is thousand grams of carbs. Oh damn! Yeah. And and some weeks I, I need to do like two three days super high carbs. Huh. And yeah, my my metabolism right now is really really bad. must be yeah must be. All right, so you heard it. This is basically this is a lot more than what I'm eating right now in the off season, and I'm growing and I'm literally putting the weight on. I mean, one thousand grams of carbs is his high day in the prep right? That's insane, I mean, it'll be okay if his low days were like zero carbs, something like that, but no, no, his medium days are 600 and his low days are 300, I mean, I'm eating like 600 grams of carbs on my training day and 300 on my rest days, that's two days in a week, so like this is probably more than I'm eating right now, and he's getting shredded, so this is pretty crazy, it's not as crazy as Roman Fritz, but this is a fast metabolism for sure, so now he's on low carbs, maybe they went a little bit more down, like maybe he's like at 200, I don't know, but he's definitely getting shredded, so when they put the carbs back in with his crazy fast metabolism, he's just gonna get fuller and harder, and if they need to push for conditioning, they can go like low carbs for a while, so he will be shredded, if he's eating this much, and he's eating in this good of a shape, he can be shredded for sure easily, and it seems like he's gonna be bigger, right? This time around, this year, he's gonna be a bigger version of himself, fuller, rounder, so it seems like it was a good decision that he went to Neil Hill instead of working with Chris Asito, I mean, we still have to wait for those 10 days to see if that's exactly the case, but it seems like it. Anyways, down below in the comment section, guys, please tell me what do you think? I mean, the question is really, can Rafael Brandau be third? That's the only thing. I think he's pretty safe in that top three. You know, Horse MD might give him a run for his money. Maybe James Hollins yet, I don't know. But, you know, as far as Rafael beating Hadi and, and Samson, no, no, I don't see that. But then again, maybe. You know, it, it's also a possibility. Like, he was battling against Samson a couple of years ago. I mean, Samson did make a lot of progress, but we don't know how much progress Rafa made as well. But I don't think he made that much. So, you know, in my opinion, 
third is probably a, a very firm spot for him maybe lower probably not higher whatever you guys think tell me down below all right next up we got uh, wesley research and this is conditioning this is details this is muscle fibers this is dryness this is hardness this is classic physique and this is what classic physique is all about it's about those details it's about crazy conditioning with good symmetry with good shape with good balance but like when you are limited with weight it's not about size you would assume that all of the top guys you know top in the world are already the max weight right so they're all gonna be equal pretty much in size maybe you can say taller guys have an advantage like wesley he's very very tall but they are all there they're all pretty close the thing they can work on and change is how conditioned how separated how detailed they are and there are a couple of things that will determine how conditioned how detailed you actually are some things are arguable like the style of training some say if you lift heavy you're gonna have details you're gonna have more hardness compared to if you were lifting you know light and, and pumping up only like doing a lot of volume and i don't know how true that is personally i believe it's determined by genetics mainly and how low you go with your body fat percent and this time around in this Arnold classic prep wesley seems to be trying to bring the next level conditioning i mean check out the striations in his chest i don't know if i ever saw him looking this peeled this dry this detailed i don't think so i think he's probably bringing his best ever because he knows he has a legit chance of you know making a mark at this Arnold classic as of right now we don't really know what Ramondino is gonna bring what Urs is gonna bring we know what Brion is bringing and we know what Wesley is bringing and what he is bringing is like some serious level of conditioning and I gotta say in this Arnold Classic prep Wesley is probably the only guy that is promoting this this Arnold Classic from all the Classic Physique guys nobody has done anything for the Classic Physique division if you didn't see the list you wouldn't even know that guys like Urs Kalicinski or Ramon Dino are even prepping for this show. I mean, sure, they're posting probably a content on their YouTube channels, you know, speaking in Portuguese or German, but like there is nothing on Instagram. This is the only guy who's doing something basically and he's creating some sort of a hype. So I want to see him do well. I want to see him win this show, even though I know it's probably impossible, but maybe top three, top four, the Iron Classic, if he does that, that would be a huge success. We'll see, I guess, classic physique is gonna be very interesting as well. But we got an off-season physique update of our current Mr. Olympia, Derek Clansford. Now, it's not really much of a physique update, it's a little video. He's showing us his abs, basically, we can see what his body fat percent is looking like in the off-season. And you can see in the video how big, how round he is. Let me play it, actually. So yeah, yeah, he's definitely very lean, he didn't get fat, but he never does, really, in the offseason, he always stays in great shape and still makes progress. Now, am I seeing some kind of crazy progress in this physique update? Not really, but I think last year it was the same case, basically, he was kind of, I think he was off of everything uh, up until, I don't know, Classic, and then he started growing rapidly. Then he started really getting freaking huge, so I think that's gonna happen this year as well. I mean, I'm not saying that he's completely off right now, but he's like probably on like a cruise cycle. I don't want to say TRT because that's referred to like an actual TRT dose. I don't think this guy is doing that, so he's probably, you know, doing a little bit more, which is probably enough to maintain all this muscle, to stay in good shape, but he's not pushing things because I don't see a crazy big change between his uh, post-show rebound period and now. Like, I don't think he has gotten any bigger, any fuller. I think he's gotten a little bit smoother. So, yeah, I think that's what's going on. But soon he's probably going to start pushing things and he's going to get massive again. Last year he was freaking huge in the offseason. His legs were like doubled in size. He lost a lot of that size uh, during the prep, but still in the offseason he was a freaking monster he knows that there is a lot of controversy regarding his win at the mr olympia and he knows that hadi is determined to make improvements so if he wants to win again he needs to make progress he needs to get bigger and better he needs to get more condition but in order to get more condition he needs to have more muscle so he doesn't lose the fullness in the legs in the chest 
when he needs to suffer down and get those areas shredded, so he needs to make improvements. And right now, it doesn't look like he's doing that, but trust me, in a couple of months, let's say a month or two after the Arnold Classic, you're gonna see this guy doubled in size. And I gotta say, his body fat percent level right now is great. This is a great position to start the offseason after his body has recovered, and I'm really curious to see how big can this guy actually get. Alright, now back to the Arnold Classic prep, so as I said 10 days out, we got another physique update of James Hollinshead without captions, and uh, here we can see what he looks like, and once again, the conditioning is not changing for the past like 4 weeks, it stayed the same, and I think he did get fuller, bigger, but conditioning, you know, it stayed on the same level, and that was basically his plan, you know, he was already in condition that he wanted to be in it, like, five weeks out, and he doesn't want to improve on it anymore, he just wants to be, you know, big and full, so regarding that, he actually issued a statement, and let me read it for you guys, and then I'm gonna tell you what I think about it. So he says, prepping is tough at the time because I have to do what I don't want to do for me to have my best look. I love to suffer and dig, but it's not worth losing shape and roundness against the best in the world, just for some extra detail. I try my best to get the best condition possible without wasting muscle. It's a hard balance and means eating when I don't actually want to. Like I said, the last time I competed, I don't know if it's working. Show they will tell. Just want to show me at my best. Now, it, it's kind of confusing because of that last part. He says, last time I competed, I don't know if it's working. Show they will tell. Why does this guy even have a coach? I mean, he's coached by probably the best coach in the world right now, Milos Archer. You know, it's him or Hunter Rambert. And it seems like Milos doesn't even have a say in this prep, because James feels like he is conditioned enough. And I know this guy is a professional, a top professional, but I see a lot of this on the amateur level, because that's where I'm at. A lot of guys don't know what they need to bring. Like, sometimes they feel like they're shredded enough, but they're not. Less often they feel like they need to dig more, but they're good enough. But, you know, usually for everybody, all of us, we are never really sure what we need to do in those final weeks. Because when you are so low in body fat percent, when you're taking stuff that you're not really taking in the off-season, when there is so much pressure because you're going to be on the stage and you have certain expectations from certain people, you know, you can't really think rationally. And that is exactly why you have a coach. You have another set of eyes, somebody with experience, somebody who understands the criteria, who knows what's the best for you and who can make decisions for you so you don't have to think about anything you just need to do. And I don't know, I guess he's not even paying me Archer because, I mean, there are coaches who would uh, train these top-level guys uh, for free, you know, just for the advertisement, and that's that's totally fine. But there are some top coaches, for example, I believe Chris Asito is one of them, who would uh, charge everybody. And I completely agree with that, because if you don't give money to somebody, why would you even listen to them? So I don't feel like James is really listening to, to Milos. I think he's just having him in his corner to help him a little, potentially help him with the peak week, and that's about it. Now, what do I think? Should he push? Should he dig more, get better conditioning and sacrifice some fullness? I mean, I don't know how much fullness would he actually sacrifice. And I'm not coaching him. Milos knows how he's reacting to low-carb diet, to dieting hard, to digging, right? To digging deep. I think he could be more conditioned, probably. I think Hardy is in much better shape. I think Samson is going to be in much better shape. Rafael Brando, Horse MD, all of these guys are going to be probably uh, leaner. So maybe if he pushed more and got leaner and then carved up heavily with Milos, the way Milos knows how to, maybe all the fullness would be back and conditioning would be better and that would be the best package for James or not. Or, you know, he can't get any better than this. This is it. But if I was him, I would just find a coach who I can trust fully, and I would just commit. But, you know, James doesn't seem like that type. He wants to be involved. He is not very coachable. Now, there is this video on this YouTube channel, and it's James talking about his current cycle. Now, I would love to make a breakdown video of exactly what he's taking, because I'm big on that stuff. I know I have a lot of info about that. It would be a very interesting video. It would be very much fun for me to make that. But I don't know. Uh, you guys can watch it and tell me what do you think about his cycle right now, because 
you know, it's nothing crazy, especially what he says, what he was taking when he started it. And I thought this is BS. This is not real. He's lying because it's basically a beginner cycle. But then later what he says, what he's taking right now, you know, it, it's quite a lot. I mean, it's, it's what you would expect from a professional at this level. And he's probably taking more. I'm sure everybody says a little bit less than what they're taking, but you know, it's a solid amount. It's it's like uh, two grams in total, and some of the stuff is like fast acting or like 100 mg per milliliter, so it's a pretty potent cycle and it's a lot of it's a lot of volume to to inject in yourself. So you guys can uh, check it out and also there's there's a oral that he is taking and he doesn't even know what's in it. It's a combination of a couple of things and he's not even sure what it is, but it works for him. So that was very interesting to hear. You guys make sure to check that video out and uh, tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more stuff like this about bodybuilding, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.